Hey, how's it going everyone? This is YLAM here. In today's tutorial, I want to talk about how you can very quickly start recording video on your Fuji X-T30. So this is definitely a video for beginners. There's actually two very easy options to do it for the X-T30. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is all of the settings that you want to do if you just want to get started with video. So let's go ahead and dive into the menu systems. Let's go ahead and go into the camera. First thing you want to do is to really get out of auto white balance because it really messes with you, especially if you have things moving in out of frame. The white balance will constantly change and that's something that you don't want. Having your white balance change all the time is not going to be a good experience. So what I would recommend you do is you go ahead and go into your kelvins and then you just set it to a temperature that actually looks good to you right now we're using daylight lights so i usually go around either 5600 or 5300 maybe even 5000 if i want it a little bit cooler so i'm going to go ahead and keep it at 5000 so if i actually move my hand in front of the image the white balance doesn't change and that's something that's super important for video let's go ahead and talk about some of the buttons some of the buttons that you want to definitely change in the gear settings so i'm over here in the gear i definitely want to go down to buttons and dials go into this menu system and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the second page so for your area lock and also for your white balance settings I definitely like to put them on switches for video. A lot of photographers do like it on press, but for video, I definitely like it on the switch. And I'll show you a demo of that a little bit later, but also for the white balance button, which is right here, I definitely want that on a switch as well. Another item that I recommend you try is in the function settings. Go ahead and go all the way to the bottom. This dial right here, you can actually push in and it can actually be a custom command. And what I set this to is face detect on and off because it's a really good idea when you're recording video to be able to switch your face detect on and off. When you're actually recording a scene in which there is a face, having face detect on is super important. But anytime you actually don't have face, you definitely want to have that off because sometimes the camera gets confused and it thinks it sees a face when there is no face in that particular scene. And you don't really want the focus to be jumping around if you're using autofocus. So definitely select that and give it a try. Another feature that's super important to understand and that's under your camera is to go ahead and set up your zebras or in other words, blown highlights. So let's go ahead and go to your zebra right here. And what I have it set to is at 100%. So if anything is blown out, let me go ahead and show you an example of that. So as you can see, I upped my exposure compensation. In other words, I told the camera to let in a whole lot more lights, which means I'm blowing out my highlights, which means I have no color information where the zebras are showing because at 100%, it's only going to show me zebras when I'm losing color information from the screen. So this is something that's super important to set because you'll know when you're actually losing highlights or you're losing color from the image that you're recording. So definitely have your zebra set. I prefer to have my zebra set to 100%. In other words, only when I'm losing color information do I want to see those zebras. But a lot of people actually set it much lower so that they can actually see when they actually have to be very careful, like 80% and some even set it all the way down to like 75. But just for my ease of use, I like to set it at 100. But you definitely want to have your zebras on as this is a very useful tool to have on. Now, if you're going to be using the camera to film yourself, another option that you might want to turn on is the tally light. In other words, when the camera is actually recording, the tally light or the front light will actually turn on. And what I like to do is I like to have the front tally light to be on all of the time. You can actually set it to blinking, but I find it to be a little bit annoying. So I'd like to have the front tally light on so that it shows me that I'm actually recording. This is super useful when you're actually filming yourself or if you're in front of the camera. And then we'll go ahead and exit out of that. And let's go ahead and go into the different types of shooting modes that you can get started with very quickly. So the first shooting mode that I actually want to talk about is the full auto feature right here. You can actually just set your camera to full auto by pushing the switch. This is something that is not on the X-T3, but it is on the X-T30. And it makes using this as a video camera super easy because you're essentially letting the camera decide and you can flip back and forth really easily. One of the things that we do lose on the X-T30 is that we don't have an ISO dial over here. We have a mode dial instead. So we're going to have to use the command dial up front here in order to change our ISO. But that's not something we need to worry about if we go ahead and switch this to full auto. 
So right now we have this camera on full auto and as you can see the screen has definitely cleaned up. I'll go ahead and switch back on to normal mode and as you can see you have a whole lot more settings here. But the second I go to full auto it kind of chooses a lot of things for you. Now the reason why we have face detect on this command dial up front is because when I push it I can actually turn face detect on which is going to be super great if you're going to be filming yourself or somebody else so it's very useful to have this on a command dial again i can easily shut it off if i'm shooting a picture like this in which there's no face but the second there is a face here i can easily turn on face detect and the camera will start trying to detect a face so that's something that's super useful to do and this is the easiest way to start shooting video with the xt30 i actually did an entire vlog with this type of setup and it actually turned out pretty well now if you don't want to use the full auto settings, you want a little bit of control, what I would recommend you do is go ahead and shut this off. Again, your face detect button still will work down here. What I would recommend you do if you don't want to be in full auto is go ahead and put your shutter speed to auto. If you have an aperture ring on your lens, you can go ahead and set it to whatever aperture you want. But if you don't have an aperture ring, it's going to be using the front command dial again along with your ISO and I'll show you that right now. So we already put our shutter speed on auto and what I would recommend you do is you can actually set your aperture which is kind of your depth of field right here. So that's kind of super important. But what I would recommend if you're just starting off for a video is to go ahead and leave it on auto ISO. And again, it's this front command dial up here. So I will go ahead and move the dial. And as you can see, the ISO starts changing. When it's actually on a number, I'm definitely setting the ISO to the value that I want. But if you go all the way to the right, it goes into auto ISO. That's what I recommend. Now, if it's changing the f-stop or the aperture, that means that it's actually set to the aperture on your command dial. What you can do is you can push in and you can switch between ISO and aperture. Now if your camera lens actually has an aperture ring, that's not going to be an option. But for this 15 to 45, there is no aperture ring. So I can actually control aperture through my front command dial. So for this particular video, since we're just talking about the basics for video, I would recommend auto shutter speed and I would recommend auto ISO. And what this will allow you to do is that since this scene is already set up, what you can go ahead and do is you can hit this button right here and this locks in your exposure as you can see that icon showed up right over here so I'll push it again icon disappears push it again it locks in all of these settings so I'll be at 1 60th of a second at f 4.5 and ISO 320 so if I go ahead and cover the lens and I go ahead and remove it you'll notice that the exposure comes back now let me go ahead and shut that off so right now it's at auto exposure if I go ahead and cover the lens and then I move back you'll notice that the exposure has changed. And this is bad because sometimes you will move things in front of your camera view. And what that does is it's gonna change the brightness of your exposure. And that's not necessarily a good thing. So a lot of times what you wanna do when you start recording video is you just wanna lock in your exposure settings. They're all locked in, you know what they are but you didn't have to set them yourself. Now, if you do want to use autofocus, which is great, another thing that you can do is you can actually select this button. And what this will do is this will lock the focus. So if you have the scene that's perfectly focused, you can go ahead and select that button. That icon will show up. It means that anything that actually appears in front of the lens, it will not automatically focus on. Instead, it'll keep focus on this particular part of the image because I have the focus locked. Now, if I go ahead and turn the focus off you'll notice that the autofocus immediately focused in my hand and then when it goes away it'll lock back focus so if I wanted to focus in on my hand and then I can hit this button if I move my hand away you'll notice that this is still blurry because it's still locked in because it's still locked in focus right here now as soon as I push this button and I leave lock I can go ahead and regain focus that is a really simple way to actually start capturing videos without you having to set the entire exposure yourself so you can quickly start shooting video without having to learn all of those manual focus settings right away. So one interesting thing to note is that if you do lock your exposure, so I have it locked right here, but say it actually got a little bit too bright or a little bit too dark for that scene, your exposure compensation dial still works. So you can actually still 
change your exposure compensation. As you can see, I've darkened the screen or I can go ahead and really brighten the screen. As you can see, I've blown out the highlights, which means there's no color information, but you can do all of this exposure setting even though you have your exposure locked through your exposure compensation. So that's something that's super important to understand. So that was a quick explanation on how you can get started with your XT30. If you have any questions or comments, definitely leave it below. I will read through them and I will definitely reply back to you. But before wrapping up this video, there is one thing that I do want to say very quickly. And it's that the XT30 is a very small body, which means when you're recording a lot of video, it generates a lot of heat. And one of the things that you definitely want to do when you're recording video on your XT30 is to move the screen away from the body of the camera because it gets really hot over here to have a little room to actually breathe in some fresh air because it's going to help dissipate a lot of heat. I would say you have about 18 to 20 minutes of record time before the temperature warning starts flashing on your screen, at which point it is a very good idea to actually just let the camera have a little bit of time to rest. So if you're the type of person that's recording constantly really long long form videos, the X-T30 probably isn't the best camera for you. You might want to consider buying an external recorder and HDMIing out and just using the external as the recording medium because like I said, once you start recording on your X-T30, this thing does get hot very quickly. And once the temperature warning comes on, you definitely don't want to use your camera system because heat is the worst thing for camera systems. So definitely be aware of that. Again, if you have any questions, definitely leave in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.